Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. The risen Christ himself stands among us and welcomes us as we come to celebrate him who is first born from the dead. In the Lord's name, I am delighted to welcome to St. Stephen's Cathedral this morning the Archbishop of Jakarta, Cardinal Ignatius Suhario, who happens to be the Bishop of Father Thomas, whom we've come to know and love here in the cathedral in recent times. The Cardinal is accompanied by Father Adi, who is the Secretary, the Archdiocesan Secretary in Jakarta, and we have with us today also Father Thomas, of course. So Jakarta is well and truly represented here in Brisbane this morning. But we welcome as well all of those who gather for the reunion of St. Stephen's School, which no longer exists, but they exist. <laughs> and they have come here to remember and to give thanks. And among them is Father Clem Hodge, well known to us here in the cathedral who himself is an old boy of St. Stephen's School. Together we come to Christ as those who have sinned, but in him we find the healing of mercy which is forever. So let's greet the Lord as he greets us. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and lead us to everlasting life.
Oh God, protector of those who hope in you, without whom nothing has firm foundation, nothing is holy. Bestow in abundance your mercy upon us and grant that with you as our ruler and guide we may use the good things that pass in such a way as to hold fast even now to those that endure forever. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord said, How great an outcry there is against Sodom and Gomorrah! How grievous is their sin! I propose to go down and see whether or not they have done all that is alleged in the outcry against them that has come up to me. I am determined to know. The men left there and went to Sodom while Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Approaching him, he said, Are you really going to destroy the just man with the sinner? Perhaps there are 50 just men in the town. Will you really overwhelm them? Will you not spare the place for 50 just men in it? Do not think of doing such a thing or kill the just man with the sinner, treating just and sinner alike. Do not think of it. Will the judge of the whole earth not administer justice? The Lord replied, If at Sodom I find 50 just men in the town, I will spare the whole place because of them. Abraham replied, I am bold indeed to speak like this before my Lord, I who am dust and ashes. But perhaps the 50 just men lack five. Will you destroy the whole city for five? No, he replied. I will not destroy it if I find 45 just men there. Again, Abram said to him, Perhaps there will only be 40 there. I will not do it, he replied, for the sake of 40. Abraham said, I trust my Lord will not be angry, but give me leave to speak. Perhaps there will only be 30 there. I will not do it, he replied, if I find 30 there, he said. I am bold indeed to speak like this, but perhaps there will only be 20 there. I will not destroy it, he replied, for the sake of the 20. He said, I trust my Lord will not be angry if I speak once more. Perhaps there will only be 10. I will not destroy it, he replied, for the sake of the 10. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I will 
adore before your holy temple. All the and love which excel all we ever knew of you on the day I called you answered you increased the strength of my soul on the He looks on the lowly and the haughty he knows from afar. Though I walk in the midst of affliction, you gave me life and frustrate my foes. On the out your hand and save me. Your hand will do all things for me. Your love, O oh Lord, is eternal. Discard not the work of your hands. On the day A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. You have been buried with Christ when you were baptized and by baptism too. You have been raised up with him through your belief in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. You were dead because you were sinners and had not been circumcised. He has brought you to life with him. He has forgiven us all our sins. He has overridden the law and canceled every record of the debt that we had to pay. He has done away with it by nailing it to the cross. The word of the Lord. Lord 
be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord, Lord. Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, and when he had finished, one of his disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught his disciples. He said to them, Say this when you pray. Father, may your name be held holy. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive each one who is in debt to us. And do not put us to the test. He also said this to them, Suppose one of you has a friend and goes to him in the middle of the night to say, My friend, lend me three loaves, because a friend of mine on his travels has just arrived at my house, and I have nothing to offer him. And the man answers from inside the house, Do not bother me. The door is bolted now, and my children and I are in bed. I cannot get up to give it to you. I tell you, if the man does not get up and give it to him for friendship's sake, persistence will be enough to make him get up and give his friend all he wants. So I say to you, ask and it will be given to you. Search and you will find. Knock and the door will be opened to you. For the one who asks always receives. The one who searches always finds. The one who knocks will always have the door open to him. What father among you would hand his his son a stone when he asks for bread? Or hand him a snake instead of a fish? Or hand him a scorpion if he asked for an egg? If you then, who are evil, know how to give your children what is good, How much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, it is wonderful to be with you today here at St. Stephen's Cathedral, Brisbane. Spain. As introduced by Archbishop Mark, my name is Ignatius Suhario. I serve as the Archbishop of Jakarta and in the College of Cardinals for the people of Indonesia. I have just arrived yesterday with my companion, Father Vincent Atti. Firstly, let me begin by expressing my gratitude to my good friend, Archbishop Mark, for his gracious hospitality not only for welcoming and allowing me to celebrate Mass with you all today, but also for taking care of Father Thomas all these years as his own. 
Let me extend my gratitude to you all in Brisbane too, who have been part of Father Thomas' ministry and certainly have supported him in various ways along his journey to completing his doctoral, doctoral study. Dear sisters and brothers, we may come from different places, speak different languages, and engage in different cultures. Yet we are united by Christ's invitation to pray one same prayer, the Our Father. Why Our Father? What kind of God is this that Jesus introduced us that he called Father? From the Bible we learn that God the Father is the God who cares for all creation. After beginning, after bringing the first human into being, God asked them to care for the Garden of Eden, the environment. God cares deeply for the humankind too. Despite our sinfulness, He never stopped caring for us. When we stumble and fall, God raises us up and gives us a new hope. As we have heard in the first reading in the narrative that should be titled, How Low Can God Go? God the Father showed his utmost care and compassion by responding to Abraham's plea and canceling the plan to destroy the city of Sodom. When there were some righteous people among the wicked, the image of God the, who cares is also found in the life of Jesus throughout his teaching and parables, including the famous one of the prodigal son. When the father saw from afar that his son had returned home, he ran to him. The gospel wrote that his heart was moved by pity. It was the father who made a move. It was the father who was the main character of the story. There were, therefore, I would like to think that this parable is more appropriately called the parable of the compassionate father rather than the parable of the prodigal son. This image of God, who is compassionate and caring, is a constant theme in Jesus' ministry. The Gospel told us that every time Jesus came across people suffering, where there were illness, grievance, hardship, his heart was moved by compassion. In Hebrew word, the word compassion is rahim, and it is derived from the name of the most motherly organ in the human body, the womb. This is where the strongest connection of compassion and love are bonded between the mother and the baby. Over and over again in the gospel, Jesus showed his compassion towards people, and this is a true representation of the God who cares. All of us, regardless of our background, language, and culture, are commissioned to bring to others the image of God who cares? The mission is clear in the parable of the Good Samaritan, whose heart was moved by compassion when he saw a helpless man dying on the street. At the end of the story, Jesus called us to go and do likewise. Dear sisters and brothers in Christ, 
it is our mission as Christians to continue presenting to the world the image of God who cares. And every time we pray the Lord's Prayer, we express our Amen, our sincere willingness to make His kingdom come wherever we are. A concrete way to carry this mission is through our actions, encouraged by the Catholic social teaching. In general, we are called to respect and honor human dignity, to strive for the common good, to show the spirit of solidarity, to give preferential option to the poor, and to care for God's creation. Implementing Catholic social teaching requires a thoughtful consideration to particular contexts, taking into account where we live, the opportunities we have, and the challenges we face. In Jakarta, Indonesia, where I serve, Catholics are minority. We are only 3% of the total population. Fortunately, we have close and warm relationship with our Muslims' neighbor. We are close to them in various ways. Our cathedral in Jakarta is located just across the road from the great mosque of Estiklal, the national mosque of Indonesia. There is also an underground tunnel which connect the cathedral and the mosque so that we can visit them easily and vice versa. This tunnel is called the Tunnel of Silaturahmi, meaning the tunnel of siblinghood united by compassion. Apart from the physical closeness, more importantly, we have the closeness of heart that long for a better world for all. This closeness drives us to collaborate in various ministries, such as tending to the poor and to the displaced, especially in times of COVID-19 and natural disasters, in the hope of establishing the kingdom of God and presenting the image of God who cares. I hope the time will come when Archbishop Mark and all of you can visit me in Jakarta to see how in your neighboring country collaboration is present and attainable to bring common good for all. This invitation is an open one. So anytime you can come, you are most, most welcome. Finally, I would say this. Indeed, we are all different. But together, we make up the body of Christ, united by the same prayer and called for the same mission, presenting to the world the image of God. Who cares? Amen. Dear Macassi, Cardinal Ignatius, thank you very much for your word of teaching and encouragement and for your invitation to visit Jakarta. We may have to organize a cathedral pilgrimage, hire a jumbo jet, so you may regret your invitation. <laughs> but we are delighted to have you among us, as we are Father Adi, to celebrate many things, including Father Thomas's graduation as a doctor of philosophy on Tuesday evening. Father Thomas has been working on his doctorate at QUT, Queensland University of Technology, and it will finally reach a point 
of maturity when he graduates in the presence of his bishop on this Tuesday evening. So we congratulate Father Thomas as well. As the Cardinal said, we are the body of Christ, so let's with one heart and one voice profess the faith that unites us across all the different languages and cultures. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord says to us, ask and you will receive, because we are embraced by a God who cares, who gives us not a rock or a snake or a scorpion, but bread and fish and an egg. So let's then open our hearts in a prayer of intercession. For victims of natural disasters, especially those who endure the heat wave in Europe at this time, may the mercy of God bring restoration to their land and relief to their spirits. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you here. Christian grandfathers and grandmothers that even in old age they may bear fruits of wisdom for their families and that they may learn to pass on the treasure of faith to younger generations. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. For all in Australia who have been baptised into the Christian faith this year, that the Holy Spirit may increase in them the virtues of faith, hope and love as they witness to the power of Christ in their lives. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. For the faith of all in our archdiocese, that the programs, events, and initiatives we produce may be a source of grace in all who participate. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you to hear our prayer. For the past pupils of St. Stephen's School, that whether they living or deceased, their stories and legacies may continue to be a source of grace and blessing upon our Archdiocese. Let us pray to the Lord. 
that citizens may enjoy a growth of faith, prosperity, and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask you hear our prayer. For all who have died as a result of COVID-19 and the war in Ukraine, that our Heavenly Father may forgive their sins and nourish them with heavenly bread. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, we ask to hear our prayer. We turn to you, our Father, trusting in the promise that you make. Listen to us and answer us for the sake of Jesus, your Son, Lord of every people, Lord of the world, for ever and ever. Amen.
brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the offerings which we bring from the abundance of your gift that through the powerful working of your grace, these most sacred mysteries may sanctify our present way of life and lead us to eternal joy. Through Christ our Lord. for the waywardness that is ours. He humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We are the Lord, and the resurrection Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial the saving fashion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your Church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with Saint Stephen, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Mark, our Bishop, and Cardinal Ignatius, the author of Bishop, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, Give thy admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. To Christ our Lord, to whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O oh God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say.
graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should give to every other man, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. We have consumed, O oh Lord, this divine sacrament, the perpetual memorial of the passion of your Son. Grant, we pray, that this gift which he himself gave us with love beyond all telling, may profit us for salvation through Christ our Lord. On the 8th of August, we will do at least two things. We will celebrate the feast of St. Mary MacKillop, patron of the diocese, and there will be a grand celebration here in the cathedral to which all are invited. But we will also farewell Father Thomas, who will finally take his leave of Brisbane and return to his home diocese in Jakarta, where Cardinal Ignatius has many jobs waiting for him. We really think the Cardinal has come here this week to make sure that Father Thomas really is returning to Indonesia, but we thank him for all that he has given 
through the years of his service here in the cathedral. We are also farewelling Father Francis. So there's movement at the station in the cathedral. Father Francis has been with us for only one year, the first year of his priestly life, but he will go to the very different scene in Caloundra uh, on the 6th of August. So we wish him well and we thank Father Francis for what he has contributed to this community. The Lord be with you. May the peace of God, which is beyond all understanding, keep your hearts and your minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. And may the God who is peace and love and joy bless you all, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God.